and will soon uh, ask uh, unanimous consent for the passage of the Daniel Underall Judicial Security and Privacy Act of 2020. This legislation is about standing up for the independence of our federal judiciary and the safety of all of those who serve it. Many of you already know the terrible tragedy that recently struck federal district judge Esther Salas and her family in New Jersey. This summer, an unhinged and violent individual showed up at Judge Salas' home impersonating a package delivery driver. When her 20-year-old son, Daniel Anderall, answered the door, the assailant opened fire, taking the life of her only child and seriously wounding her husband, Mark Anderall. Unfortunately, this tragedy is not the first attack on a federal judge. There was the 1979 murder of Judge John Wood in San Antonio, Texas, the 1988 murder of Judge Richard Dor Doranco in Pelham, New York, the 1989 murder of Judge Robert Vance in Fountain Brook, Alabama, the 2005 murder of the husband and mother of Judge Joan Lefko in Illinois, and there have been other attacks as well. In June 2013, Chief Judge Timothy Corrigan was targeted by a gunman who purchased the address of his Florida home on the internet for a mere $1.95. $1.95. The gunshot missed his ear by less than two inches. And just last month, a judge's address was circulated on social media, urging people to gather outside his home while the judge was hearing a high-profile case. According to the U.S. Marshal Service, threats against federal judges rose by 500 percent between fiscal years 2015 and 2019. This trend should worry all of us who care about our Constitution. An independent judiciary in which judges can render decisions without fear of retribution and violence is essential to the integrity of our democracy. Indeed, the idea that any judge at any level of government could be intimidated undermines the very concept of the rule of law. We expect all Americans to have respect for the rule of law, even when they disagree with the outcome of a case or a particular ruling. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. Some individuals delude themselves into believing that violence is the answer. Well, we may not be able to eliminate hatred from someone's heart, but what we can do is make sure that the men and women who serve on our federal bench do not make for such easy targets. That's why after Daniel's murder, I made a personal commitment to Judge Salas. I told her that I would develop legislation along with my colleague, Senator Booker, to better protect the men and women who sit on our federal judiciary, to ensure their independence in the face of increased personal threats on judges, and to help prevent this unthinkable tragedy, unthinkable tragedy, from ever happening again to anyone else. The Daniel Andrews Judicial Security and Privacy Act of 2020 is a bipartisan, bicameral, and common sense plan to safeguard the personal information of federal judges and their families. And I want to thank my colleague, Senator Booker, who's been there every step of the way, a member of the Judiciary Committee, and Chairman Graham, Senator Lindsey Graham, uh, for leading this effort with me. Our legislation makes it unlawful for data brokers to knowingly sell, trade, license, purchase, or otherwise provide personally identifiable information of a federal judge or their family. Since its introduction, we have worked with several stakeholders, including the Administrative Office of the U.S. Courts, the U.S. Marshal's Office, the American Civil Liberties Union, among others. Together, we carefully updated legislative language in order to uphold the First Amendment right of the press to report on matters of public concern and balance that right with our urgent need to better protect the safety of federal judges and their families. Federal judges and their families will continue to be able to seek relief through the courts for the knowing and willful publication of their personal information, 
and the party responsible for the violation will have to pay the cost and reasonable attorney fees. The bill enjoys widespread support among judicial and attorney organizations, including the National Association of Attorneys General, the National Judicial Conference, the Federal Judges Association, the National Conference of Bankruptcy Judges, the American Bar Association, the National Hispanic Bar Association, the National Bar Association, and several others. Madam President, America's federal judges must be able to render rulings without fearing for their lives or the lives of their loved ones. We must better protect federal judges' personal information from those who would seek to do them harm. That's exactly what the Daniel Andrew Judicial Security and Privacy Act of 2020 will do. This legislation will not bring Judge Salas's son back. But we must ensure, as Judge Salas said, that his death not be in vain. As she recently wrote in the New York Times, and I quote, Daniel's death is speaking to us, but will we listen? For the sake of my brothers and sisters on the bench, Congress must act now. Every day that goes by without action leaves our federal judges, our justice system, and our very democracy in danger, close quote. Madam President, we must protect the independence of our courts, the safety of our judges, and prevent this sort of tragedy from ever happening again. This is a common sense bill. It will save lives, and I urge my colleagues to approve it without delay. Before asking for consent, I want to turn to my distinguished colleague, the Senator from New Jersey, Senator Cory Booker. The Senator from New Jersey. Uh, I come to the floor today in support of my senior senator's unanimous consent request to pass the Daniel Anderall Judicial Security and Privacy Act. As Senator Menendez pointed out, this is a bipartisan piece of legislation. It is bicameral. It will take important steps to safeguard the personally identifiable information of federal judges and their family members from individuals who wish to do them harm. And as Senator Menendez said, it's named after Daniel Anderall the son of Judge Esther Salas and Mark Andral, who was senselessly murdered in July of this year by a hate-filled gunman. The gunman was able to access the personal information, as Senator Menendez said, by going to Judge Salas's information, getting it, including where she lived, the routes she took to work, and even her place of worship and her home address. As a result, just Judge Salas and her husband have gone through something that no parent ever ever should have to go through. No person who takes on the responsibility of serving as a federal judge should ever have to live in fear that they or their family could be targeted by someone wishing to do them harm, who is able to easily access their personal information. Passing this bill today in memory and in honor of Daniel Anderall will mark a commitment of this body to safeguarding the privacy and security of our federal judges and their families so that we can make sure we are doing all in our power to prevent this from happening to another family. Our bill, as, just, as Senator Menendez said, has broad support. It has been endorsed by the Administrative Office of the U.S. Courts, Federal Judges Association, the Federal Magistrate Judges Association, the National Conference of Bankruptcy Judges, the Federal Bar Association, the National Association of, Eternal, of Attorneys Generals, and others. People from all backgrounds, people from both parties, independents, we have a unanimous chorus of support of people who believe that this is justice and will help keep judges safe. James C. Duff, the administrative director of the U.S. Courts, said in his statement of support of this bill that, quote, it is critical in our system of justice that judges decide cases without fear for their safety and for that of their family. He is absolutely right. I echo Senator Menendez's request to pass the Daniel Anderall Judicial Security and Privacy Act. Thank you, Madam President. I yield the floor.
Senator from New Jersey. Therefore, as if in legislative session, I ask unanimous consent that the Judiciary Committee be discharged from further consideration of S-4711. The Senate proceed to its immediate consideration. Further, that the Menendez substitute amendment at the desk be considered and agreed to. The bill as amended be read a third time and passed, and that the motions to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Is there objection? Madam President. Senator from Kentucky. <clears throat> Reserving the right to object, I agree that members of the judicial branch need better protection. In fact, I've been active in this issue for the last couple of years, and each time this has come forward at the end of the year with very little time to do the normal process, I've advocated that an amendment be added that uh, would include protection of members of Congress. I really think that this is important that we protect addresses for our judges, but it's also important that we do this for our elected officials. In recent years, what has happened has taught us that the legislative branch needs better protection as well. That was clear in 2011 when Congresswoman Gabby Giffords was tragically shot while doing the most important part of the job, meeting with constituents. Words cannot express how happy and inspired it was to see Congressman Giffords here in the chamber as her husband, Senator Kelly, was recently sworn in as a member of the body. But words also cannot express the pain felt by the family of the people who were killed and wounded that day. That should have been a wake-up call to better protect members of Congress, and in doing so, better protect the people around them. But just as a few years later, a shooter nearly killed Congressman Steve Scalise during baseball practice for the annual charity baseball game. I was there, and I said at the time that our lives were saved by the Capitol Hill police. Had they not been there, things might have gone much worse. But the Capitol Hill Police are not stationed at our homes where our families live while we serve in Washington. Extending the provision of this bill to the members of Congress would better protect all of us, our families, our neighbors, and our constituents. It's a very minor request that I'm asking. It's an amendment that would not change anything or lessen anything about the bill. It's a very reasonable request, and I don't understand exactly why we can't make this bill better by implying it to both judges and members of Congress. My substitute amendment, which I will offer for unanimous consent, will make simple changes to the legislation. It would extend the same protections it would offer to the judicial branch to the legislative branch. Second, the laudable goal of this legislation is to protect personally, identif informa personally identifiable information from being sold and posted online by data brokers, allowing at-risk individuals to file private action against data brokers for declarator declaratory and injunctive relief plus reasonable attorney's fees will achieve that goal. I asked the senator to modify his request to instead include my substitute amendment at the desk and that my substitute amendment be considered and agreed to, the bill as amended be considered read a third time and passed, and that the motions to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table. Does the senator so modify his request? Uh, reserving uh, the right to object to the modification. Uh, Look, I, I appreciate uh, the Senator's concern uh, to expand the universe of people covered by this bill, including members of Congress. And while that is a laudable goal, I personally think it is more appropriate to legislate in another bill. This bill is for the federal judiciary because of the special threats they face and the importance of ensuring their independence in terms of being able to make judgments based on the law and the facts, not upon some fear that lurks outside of their home or outside of their chambers. I also understand that the amendment uh, would strip out, and, and uh, I'm, if I'm wrong, I'd be happy to, to be corrected, would strip out uh, the ability uh, to seek redress in the court uh, as it relates to the provision that we provide for judges. Without the threat of some damages, there is little incentive for a data broker to remove the personally identifiable information of a judge of his or her family. Uh, this is not about frivolous suits. This is about protecting the federal judiciary. Uh, in addition to that, we, we have made several good faith efforts before we got to this point to address the concerns for my colleagues across the aisle. We've actually had the Administrative Office of the U.S. Courts engaged 
in conversations directly with our colleagues. My colleagues had concerns about a new grant program to states. Well, we changed that language to a report. Senator Lee was part of those concerns. To better understand the proper federal law, we changed it to a report. Uh, they don't want to deal with uh, some of the questions uh, about uh, the, that we had for uh, the U.S. Marshals. And uh, again, this is about protecting the federal judiciary. Guess what branch protects the federal judiciary? The U.S. Marshals. But we changed that. So it never seems to be enough. It never seems to be enough. And it's unfortunate that the federal judiciary will pay the price of this recalcitrance. But um, I cannot at this time uh, agree to the modification, and therefore I object to it. Is there objection to the original request? Madam President, uh, reserving the right to object, I would like to offer across the aisle that we are willing to compromise with the Senator from New Jersey. We are willing to work with him on getting the bill passed. The only thing that we would like to do is have it include Congress as well. The other points that you've mentioned that you object to as far as changing, I'd be willing to discuss, and I think there would be a middle ground. I think this could be passed, but when we pass things unanimously, there has to be a little bit of give and take. No one gets their way, and I'm not saying you can't have it. I'm for your bill in general. I just think it ought to be expanded to Congress. We've had at least two people shot, Gabby Gifford shot, We've had Steve Scalise shot. We've had other threats. And Congress is uh, threatened, and families are frightened. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, routinely the sheriff and police have to come to our house for threats to my house. And I'm not alone. This happens to other people. There's no reason why we should do this only for one branch of government. Um, you know, they put my... They put my um, a, a satellite picture of my house on the nightly news. You know, basically pointing out where every crazy person in the world can go to find my house. So, I mean, we do need to do something. And this isn't a new request. I requested this a year ago when a very similar bill came up a year ago for special protections for the judiciary. I said, once again, good idea, but we should apply it to Congress. We go forward a whole year, and now we're doing the same thing again, and nobody seems to be listening. But I will tell you that I am willing to compromise on this. I'm willing to work with you to pass it. But I think we should extend it, and it's not that hard. If we extend it to Congress, flip it back, and I think it would pass unanimously in the House as well. But I object to this version. Objection is heard. Madam President. Senator from New Jersey. Uh, I just say to my colleague that I certainly am concerned about his safety and security, and for that fact, the safety and security of all of our colleagues. And I appreciate uh, his concern and understand it and look forward to working with him on that. I will say that the other elements that Senator Lee had incorporated into his amendment just renders the security, whether for a member of Congress or for the judiciary, useless. Uh, in which case, I don't want to give any false security to anybody that they're being protected if, in fact, they don't have the wherewithal to do so. But I look forward to that opportunity. And uh, I, I promise Judge Salas that her son's death will not be in vain. And we may not have achieved it tonight with Senator Booker, but uh, we're going to make this happen. Uh, uh, you know, hopefully sooner rather than later, but we're going to make this happen. With that, I yield the floor.